You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. And he came bearing gifts. That's right. Biggs. <laughs> That's what we call him. Kareem Biggs. Kareem Biggs yeah. Burke is here. That's right. Brought those packages. That's right. These are the uh, the Rockefeller Air Force Ones. It's amazing how one little logo can change the whole complexion of a sneaker. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Limited edition. It's actually upgraded, too, the leather and everything. So it's not like the one that we had out years ago. So everything has been upgraded. What made you want to bring the Air Force back? Um, Nike actually reached out to us. Uh, they wanted to do something for the 35th anniversary, and um, it made sense. I actually was talking to a few people about doing deals at that time, but um, being that the Air Force One was a part of the genesis of what we built, it just made sense, you know. Absolutely. What got you back into the clothing so heavy? Um, a friend of mine actually is funny because I went to talk to him about some music. He has... Uh, that he was doing with a, one of his artists and he approached me and was like, look, he's doing something with 4th of November mm -hmm. and asked me to be a part of that. And that's what was the, the bridge to get me back into fashion. So, Explain to people what the 4th of November is. Uh, 4th of November is a denim line, pays homage to denim. Um, it was born in Brooklyn, but uh, we actually relaunching that. So some of the designers and the people that was a part of the team early on, um, I didn't really agree with the vision that they had, so I'm taking that and revamping it, and we're relaunching it in about three months. Wow. Why 4th of November? What was so significant about It was that actually day? an address where the designer and his sister um, parents met. Okay. So uh, the address in Ecuador called 4th of November, day, and it was paying homage to the love story that they met because they wanted their kids to get out of Ecuador through fashion. Mm. So they had got into tailoring and um, fashion business, and the kids did too, and they paid homage to the love story. My yeah. dumbass thought it was a Jay Z line somewhere. I could have sworn I was like, hey, it must <laughs> nah, December fourth. You got on some? What are those dunks? Nah, these are Jordans. Jordans with the reasonable, reasonable doubt. Yeah, these are reasonable doubt Jordans. Those ain't out. Those <laughs> 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 <Yeah, laughs> coming out. Them the, them the Jordan ones, right? Yeah. Wow. I'm now clean. you also had the reasonable doubt pop up shop, and that went crazy. Yeah. Had it all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we started that in L.A., um, and then we, we had one in New York, and then I did uh, 22 in one day um, all across the U.S. How did that work with the Rockefeller merchandise? Like, do you, Dame and Jay, still lead off the logo, or, like, how did that work? Well, no, this is my project, so um, I, I took this, and I, I've been designing, and it started out celebrating a 20-year anniversary, but so many people have been wanting the line and been asking for it, so I started to design more and more, and then I made Reasonable Doubt into a line. Mm -hmm. So it'll do some things with merch, but then it'll be his own contemporary line as well. Now listen, a lot of these kids don't know shit, right? Mm -hmm. We know who you are, yeah. you know, but people are wondering, well, who is this guy with all of this merchandise and Jay-Z <laughs> merchandise and Rockefeller logo? <laughs> right, like, yeah. Explain to the people who you exactly are. <laughs> you tell me like, Explain to the Bible. Who yeah. Well, co-founder of The Rock. So, you know, yep. we started out in uh, probably uh, late 94, but the label launched in 96. But, you know, I mean, it's so much rock, rock, rock now. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me to just say Rockefeller Records is one thing, but, you know, co-founder of The Rock. So we put this together, Dame, uh, Jay, and myself. It was a three-headed monster. You were just the yeah. one that chose to be more discreet. Yeah. And why was that? Why were you so discreet? Well, it so wasn't quiet? that I chose. It was just that it was how we came together. And it made sense. I mean, Dame knew way more about the business mm -hmm. than any of us, Jay or myself, because he had uh, Original Flavor and Future Sound signed the clock at that time. And because the label didn't do right by him, he had to go into every office and learn a different aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. So with him and that knowledge came, coming to us, you know, with the best out and saying like, yo, we should do this together. Me and a crew of people, I was the only one that called them the next day and was like, I like what you was talking about. Even though we were all friends, you know, when it's 13 people, everybody kind of click mm, up and go different ways. Right. But after that day, I spoke to Dame and then me and him started to, uh, you know, have build a relationship on another level. And then, you know, supporting the group, uh, uh, the Rockefeller uh, at the time, and then we ended up putting it together. So you saw the vision, basically. Yeah. Why, why did back then street guys thought that the rap game was corny? Um probably because street guys have more money than the rap guys. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and then at the same time, that whole lifestyle that they was portraying, uh, the street guys were living. Mm. Now, you were also very instrumental with Kanye and mm -hmm. Cameron and everybody. Explain that coming over to the rock back then. Well, Kanye was obviously later on, but uh, at that time, Dame had went to run uh, Rock Aware and Jay was doing uh, S.I. Carter and a few um, other businesses. So I had took over the, uh, the helms at Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. So I actually launched Kanye's first album. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Now, then there was a period of time, right, where you ended up going to jail. And I remember when that mm-hmm. happened and everybody was, like, shocked and stunned, you know, um, with what's going on and everything that happened there. So when you came back home, before you went to jail, were you always, did you always know that you wanted to be into the fashion aspect of things? Or was it something nah, that... No, like, th- these things just happen. I like business. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't matter uh, what it is, as long as if it makes sense for me. And if I know I could connect the dots and if I can grow a company's bottom line, that's what I look at. So fashion wasn't something that I was particularly looking at. It just kind of happened that way. When Rockefeller uh, disbanded and everybody went their different ways, what was your mindset? Because that was a company that you guys built and mm-hmm. grinded out for years. Was it was it one of those things where you were a little depressed, where you were a little out of it? Because we didn't see Biggs for a minute. No, it wasn't. I mean, we knew that in 97 that we was going to um, sell a company. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people didn't know that. They thought it was this big breakup, even though we all did go certain, you know, different ways. And there was things that happened in the relationships. Mm-hmm. But we, we knew we we would sell a company. So we was actually looking forward to that because that's when the big check right. comes in. Yeah. Now, you bought it. You got arrested. How, how did you get caught up back in the, the drug game? Well, what happened was I was buying dispensaries in California and I had a friend in New York who was saying like, uh, you know, he wanted to connect with some of the guys that I was, the farmers that I was getting the weed from for the dispensaries and then connecting them, uh, they conspired to uh, buy weed and cross uh, state lines. Mm-hmm. So that's a federal offense. So because I did that, I connected them, that's a conspiracy. Wow. So that's like a grow house, like they had the grow houses? Yeah, so, that... you, so you have grow houses that sell to dispensaries. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'll just buy the grow houses and build a vertical and then have the dispensaries. So it takes a certain amount of time for that to happen. So in between that, friends was like, yo, let me uh, speak to I was like, yeah, ain't no problem. You know, I'm Not so far removed. Right. But the guy was being watched, um, you know, for several years. So they really wanted him. So they attached themselves to a lot of people. Some had things that do with the case and some didn't. But for me, I think that at the time I had so much notoriety, they figured that I would be the first person at a fold. And, um, you know, I just chose not to say anything because they wanted to know who's this person and that and I ended up taking five years for that. That's why the a Jay-Z line makes so much sense on 444. Yeah. Four, four. yeah. Right. Even today, the laws are so murky as far as like mm. the, you know, we being marijuana being legal and yeah. for medical purposes, but in some states it's not as really... A weird situation. Yeah, I was a soldier people. at war. Would you ever get back into it? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's not what I'm saying. It's not. It's not um, because of what happened. It's just that you know I'm, I'm doing so many other things right now. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. I'm sure you heard the Mason Cameron go back and forth. You are a Harlem native. You are a Harlem native. I'm sure you know I, I both. I actually him. didn't. You didn't hear it? Nah. Somebody was telling me about it. I heard some of the Mace, and then they had shown me. I think Cam's Instagram with mm-hmm. something that he replied back. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I didn't really. Oh, so yeah. you don't pay attention to stuff like that. I mean, I was, you know, in the middle of dropping his Nike sneaker. Right. So it was so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was so guy. much going on. I'm having 14 <laughs> hour days. It was kind of hard to kind of you know do all that stuff in between. What is it about the Rockefeller team that has kept like the core of you guys together all these years? I think it's the relationship that we built. So you know, Rockefeller was built on you know honor, you know loyalty, um, and and the relationships that grew out of that all these years, it was it's a brotherhood, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, some people are a secret society or whatever it is, but um, it's just a love for uh, each other that I don't think that'll ever go away. Now, you can't just skate by that, because they're gonna take that one clip, the secret society, and be like, see, Illuminati, mm-hmm. confirmed. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's all good. <laughs> they do that anyway. <laughs> What's your relationship like with Dame now? Um, it's cool, I spoke to Dame uh, last week. Got you. Yeah. I saw anything, so, you said anything could happen as far as if the three of you guys could ever regroup together mm-hmm. and you're like, hey, anything's possible. Yeah, anything's possible, but I think that's more for the public because public, you know, people reaching out, we want to see, we want to see, but if, if nothing makes sense, we're not going to do something just for, you know, for the public's sake. But um, speaking on Dame, I spoke to him uh, last week, um, af- actually offering my condolences because his um, aunt passed and she was like a mother to all of us. So Linda Dash, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Stacy and Darian's mother. Uh, passed last week, so sorry to hear that. I, yeah. I feel like uh, Dame, uh, a lot of things Dame was saying back in the day, even though they may have come out in a harsh way. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know why I'm starting to realize like a lot of the stuff he said was right. Yeah, I mean everybody has you know the hiccups and pitfalls, and and they're not right 100 percent of the time. But Dame was a genius, is a genius, you mm-hmm. know. So you know he he's a great motive uh, motivator, he's a great visionary, you know, and um and he's a great businessman. You think you'd ever got? completely out of the street if it wasn't for Dane? Like having that vision for Rockefeller? 
um, at that time, that was the uh, the bridge that you know that that we was able to cross to get us from one situation to another. How did you so, know Jay was that the artist? You know, because when he first came out, he was da -da 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 -da, he was rapping really I, fast. I heard you wasn't sold on him. No, I wasn't. It mm -hmm. wasn't until he battled DMX, mm. and that's when you know, and those were different rhymes at that time. So right. when he did that, I, I really believed in him. Is that, is that what we see, that battle that was on video? Like, yeah, that Big L was taping. Got you. Yeah. Big L was taping that? Yeah, that was Big L. That was Big L taping. Why the hell yeah. was Big L the cameraman? He should have been in the battle. <laughs> nah, Big L was there, and then uh, I think it was Y and D was like, nah, our stuff ain't uh, copywritten, so don't tape us. So that's why you only see uh, Jay's part tape. It's such a different day and age today, too. Like, okay, we don't have stuff on camera from back then like as much as now. Anything that Everything's you do, on camera now, yeah. gets captured. Yeah. Anybody with a phone yeah. or anything. Yeah, do we got to find like... that VHS tape. With Big <laughs> L. Do you feel like things would have been like so much different for you guys back then if there was camera phones and... Yeah, it, yeah definitely been different. But the thing is, um, you know, we still trying to... I, I just actually found a whole bunch of stuff in my storage in Atlanta the other day. I didn't even know it was there taking cobwebs and stuff on it, so... Um, Cause there's a Rockefeller documentary that I'm looking to uh, put together, so it's a lot of stuff that'll probably come out that I haven't even seen in years that I got to get digitized See. myself. How did you and Jay start working back with each other after you, you came out of jail? Well, we're not working with each other at all. Not at know? all. Oh, so yeah, what you're doing it has nothing to do with no. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just support. Well, he damn sure wears the product. I seen him with the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I seen him with the Air Force Ones on this week. Yeah. Well, last well, week at the well, it's, it's hot product. You yeah, know what absolutely. I mean? So. So Nobody be wearing it if it was it was it was some trash, right? So right. there's the reasonable doubt merchandise, and there's mm -hmm. Rock ninety six. Yeah, the Rock ninety six is now Redo ninety six. Redo ninety six. Yeah, so that's like a, a luxury line that I've you know started out in uh, Barney's and then went to Revolve and Luis Vierome in Italy and you know other stores around the world, and then there's Fourth of November. Now with the Rockefeller logo, I thought you guys sold the Rockefeller Company logo and everything. Was yeah. that true? Yeah. So how how y'all still using the logo? We have access. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always see you do hashtag redo ninety six. Does that mean like you want to bring ninety six back? Like what does that mean? Well, well, redo. Well, ninety six is where we started, so mm -hmm. I always want to pay homage to that. But uh, redo is going to allow me to do things that's a little more fashion forward and take some more chances without being stuck in the past. Were you always vocal, like, uh, like I guess, amongst the crew, just not yeah, in public? 100, yeah, mm -hmm. All right, got you. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, we came together like that. It was, you know, Jay would be the mouthpiece of the music, Dane would be the mouthpiece of the business, and, you know, I did a lot of the marketing and the creative ideas in the background, along with bringing the lifestyle. But we all made um, decisions collectively. Now, they, I remember on that Double XL. Was it Double XL? Yeah, Double XL. They said it was you and uh, Emery in the car when Jay yeah. was leaning on it. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, it was me, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now you um, also have said that you wanted to get back into the spirits business. Mm -hmm. Were you involved with the whole Armadale situation? Well, that was my idea. All yeah. right, so what happened with Armadale that it didn't work out the way you anticipated? Well, what happened was we had a deal with uh, William Grant and Sons. I don't know if y'all familiar with Hendrix Gin mm -hmm. or Sailor mm -hmm. Jerry's and stuff they like that. They just did a whole, whole huge no. relaunch of Hendrix. Yeah, so they had 10 companies that they was uh, that they had co-ventures with, 50-50, and they wanted to buy out all their partners. They wanted to own everything 100%. And when they came to us, we bought them out. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I couldn't find another manufacturer um, to make it because it was made in Scotland at the time. So Armadale was a Scottish castle. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole storyline behind it. So it took like another two or three years, and then it would have probably cost another six, seven million dollars of investment that we just wasn't ready to make at that time. So, so you still own Armadale, but no, no, no. So we just let the trademark go. Let mm -hmm. the trademark go. Mm -hmm. now, I saw you on Angie Martinez show. You said you used to play the backseat role because you were standoffish and didn't trust people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's changed? These people still grimy. Like, yeah, it is. But now, I mean, it, it was different before because, you know, with all three of us and being in the music business, it was all those new relationships that I had to build. So now I, I'm not in any of those businesses, so I can kind of choose and pick what I want to do. Gotcha. You know? Now with these sneakers, you said only 200 pair were made? No, 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 not that. The, oh. the jacket, that I just gave y'all some redo uh, jackets yeah. from Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. That's... Um, 200 of those made, and these jackets right here, this was only 100 okay. made. These are the jackets that we did with Nike. Now, what these sneakers? These sneakers are full release, so you can get them at Foot Action, Foot Locker, everywhere? Or? You can try to get them. So <laughs> <laughs> the good thing, I mean, that 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 was the, the more surprising thing, I, I think, for me. It's, it's hard to realize what's happening when you're inside of it, you mm -hmm. know, when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But um, they said, besides Virgil, I was the only one to crash the Nike app, and we did it twice. Virgil White? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the Rockefeller lifestyle? Mix so it's, right now, it's 
they sent basically sold out worldwide. This was the, this was the bigger release out of all. Three. So I can put these on line and probably sell them for. You went once. You want to hold yeah. these. You want to hold these. I bought two <laughs> pairs. I bought a pair and then these pairs. So I got a pair to wear. Okay, let me get those back. No, no I'm keeping these. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, what, what about the Rockefeller lifestyle? Makes it timeless that all generations feel like they they gravitate towards it. Um, I, I guess you know a, a lot of what we did. We, we we stood true to what we believed in. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't a lot of really, or compromise and integrity. We wasn't, like now you hear stuff, yo, I'll do that if the bag is right. Like that's right. one of the things that really pissed me off. I'm like, you know, if you do anything for money, what's what's what, what's that say about you? You know, right. so we, we always picked and choose what we did. We probably stretched ourselves thin by trying to do too many companies, but it was all independent. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about somebody trying to give us a check or hiring us. So um, I think just really staying true to who we were. But y'all came in with the bag, though. So that's easy to yeah. say you don't do it for the bag. I know, but you still, I mean, there's bigger bags, too, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. like Jay, he's the same person that he always was. I remember back then, if he was getting 10000 for a show, if somebody offering him fifty, and he didn't want to do it, he just wouldn't do it. Got you. You know? I, mean, I called them a couple years ago. I was like, yo, so I got somebody they want to pay, uh, I think it was like a million and a half for for two shows so three million dollars and they want him to do an hour each and he was like nah I'm just chilling right now Jesus Christ <laughs> so <laughs> Jesus Christ that's nice. what I'm saying so he just never changed he's yeah, just the yeah, same yeah. you know what's the worst mistake you? well what's one mistake that you guys made in the industry at all if you could think of one mistake that you made I think probably contractually uh, early on with Reasonable Doubt and probably with, with Kanye cause uh, Lior he gave us a um he gave us an out. He was saying that we could take Kanye anywhere. Uh, at that time, he didn't believe in him or the Young Guns, and we mm-hmm. went and shopped Kanye at two different places, and then we was like, man, these guys are idiots. We might as well just keep him here. But if we would have took him someplace else, we would have probably, you know, he would have been contractually signed to us still. Mm-hmm. Did you ever, like, try to be the the, the, the mediator between whatever Dame and, and Jay was going through? Um, no. It, it wasn't, I don't think it was anything to be mediated. It, it was, you know, stuff come out, but it's the same thing. When I didn't see Jay for a long time, they was like, what's going to happen? I was like, we probably laugh. And that's the same thing. That's exactly what happened. The same thing when I seen Dame. You know what I mean? It was just it was just laughter. So it's all brothers. Do you ever feel moved to work with any of these new artists? Like, I'm sure people have been hitting you up and coming to you like, yeah, definitely. man, Biggs, I would love, you know, for you to help me out, consult, yeah. manage, yeah, man, do I'm my merch, you something. Yeah. No, I get that all day. I'm not, I don't have the passion to do uh, music no more. You know, I, I'm glad that we created history and it's where it is. But I'm not trying to recreate that. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? Because you don't think that like the bar is so high with what y'all did with Rockefeller that you can't... Uh, I, I'm just. I mean, it was a great business mm-hmm. move for me at that time. You know, it wasn't like something like I'm like, damn, I can't wait to get in the music business. You know, that's why I didn't really care about the relationships outside of that. You know, meaning inside the music business, but all around it, it was. That's why I was one of the reasons I was standoffish. It was like this is for a check and we'll use this as a platform to launch other businesses. Mm-hmm. I was always more interested in the other things. I always wondered about the masters of Reasonable Doubt, too, because mm-hmm. it was that whole thing where, where Dame didn't want to give him up to Jay. I'm, you had to have a part in that, too. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there was a situation back then where we was talking about where would it go or how would it go, but we still all own it together. Got you. Yeah. Now, would you ever write a book or is that too incriminating? Um, I mean, I've been approached by doing um, a lot of books before, but... Right now, I'm really interested in um, telling a story through um, a documentary, mm-hmm. you know, of all three of our lifestyles, because I think um, it's something there that I can tell in a different way, not about all the success, but really about all the pitfalls, and then, you know, tell a story that way. Well, Jay's always been, like, kind of hush on that. like. So... Well, he, he Jay's always hush until you hear his music, and then you you, you know exactly what, where, what he's, where he's at in life or what he's going through. Yeah. Right? yeah. So he talked about his father a lot of times. Like now, when you hear it and you could go back, if you actually put every song together that he's talked about one specific, uh, specific subject, it's like a whole story within itself. For the right. three of you, whenever you decided to say sign somebody or make a business move, did you all have to agree? Was it more like a two out of three people have to say? We usually we usually all agree. Probably the only one, um, but I was later on, and we was uh, was old dirty bastard. Oh, I like remember we, that. Yeah, we just did that. When he first got out of prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I didn't Dame even... wanted to sign him? Yeah, Dame wanted to sign him. Mm-hmm. Now, how was that? Were you running Rock? Because you said, you know, uh, Jay was one way, Dame was the other way when... Yeah, what period he, was the Bigs era that he, we didn't know yeah, about? Yeah, when, when they made Cam Probably president. Two, was that that era? 2002. 
Yeah. So you made Cam president? You, you was part of the decision to make Cam president at that time? Well, he wasn't really president. It was just something that was, you know, said vocally. It wasn't nothing put down on paper. So he, he actually didn't take it. It was actually supposed to be Cam and Beans. Mm. So that, that that never happened, though. Well, damn, what about Bleak? He, <laughs> he, was, he was, yeah. was there from the beginning. Yeah, but it was about um, them because they had so much under them at that time. Oh, you know, state property. State diplomat, property yeah. and diplomat. So it was mm-hmm. kind of like, like just passing it to them. I mean, we were selling the company anyway. So it was really like a title thing, and then they could branch off and do their own thing. Right. So what was the cause like with that? Like, was there like, a, uh, yo, Biggs, what's going on? Or, or... No, it wasn't. It wasn't nothing with that. Like I said, it never happened. Mm-hmm. So you know, the public takes it another way once they run with it. It's just like when we were shooting Death of the Dynasty, and then we were all meeting and be like, "Yo, what's going on on Fox Five? They was like Rockefellers breaking up, and we looking at each other like, "What the hell is going on?" Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Why are we shooting a spoof? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But neither all three of us are looking at each other like, "Where is this coming from?" You know what I mean? Yeah. So we didn't even know. It, it was it was just a crazy time. You think y'all might have created that energy with Death of a Dynasty? Um, I don't know. I never, I never thought about it. It was just something that was funny to us, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, we, you know, we met twice about it, and we was like, yo, did you say something? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was all good. And how did you avoid being in the backstage documentary? <laughs> I watched that this week, and I probably watched it Saturday. Like, how did you avoid? Like, you were, I didn't even see a glimpse of you in the backstage documentary. I, I didn't even go to tours. Really? Yeah. You didn't go to tour at all? I, pro- I went to one show because... Uh, I think in D.C. because A.I. was playing Ross Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to go see the game. Go to the game. Yeah, but I, I actually hate shows. I don't, I, don't, I don't enjoy it. I mean, I don't know. I just never really enjoy shows. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? The, uh, I think it was maybe the Blueprint Tour. I went on that one a couple of shows. Mm-hmm. But, like, even now, people try to get me out all the time. I just don't enjoy shows. I yeah. feel you on that. I'm the same way. I'd rather just listen to an album that yeah. I really like than actually have to go through mm-hmm. the whole process. It feels like work to me. Yeah, I mean, I went to Jay's show the other, actually two of them the other day, and um, I mean, we had a, we had a really good time. It was good to see that, and I went to the Meadow show. But every show I went to was like my friend's birthday, and they they dragged somebody me else out. wanted to go. I'm yeah. the same way. Uh, yeah, uh, but <laughs> somebody got to go, or yeah. my daughter wants to go. That's the only time I'm going. Now I'm sure you've been seeing all these sexual assault accusations mm-hmm. against all these figures in both music now, like Russell Simmons, mm-hmm. and in the film industry. Yeah, I just heard the Russell Simmons thing. I think well, I want to say yesterday. I was mm-hmm. like, damn. And politics. Do you feel like that time was just really like a? You, I'm sure you've seen some crazy things happen. Mm-hmm. Hip hop was wild. So the backstage what do documentary should... was wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, back then at Def Jam, it used to be crazy. Yeah. What do you think I should mean... happen now? Like, do you think that this is something that when it gets brought back up? There should be some type of repercussions from that. I'm I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you know, if, if that case is probably a whole, it's probably thousands of people to blame. You know, um, I guess it's really up to the, those women because those are the ones that's really standing up right now and you know and, and pointing fingers. And it's probably something that they want to really let out and to say like, look, I was treated um, unfairly. And I mean, if an apology is old, I think it should definitely be given. Mm-hmm. Um, whether somebody should step down or not um, is not for me to say, but I, I guess it's where they at in their life right now. Were you there when Dame slapped Harvey Weinstein? Um, no, and I, I don't. I'm not sure if that happened. If you know. Dame said it. He did. said <laughs> someone got slapped. Yeah. He said someone got. Oh, slapped. Oh, yeah, somebody got slapped. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say who it was. <laughs> well, we appreciate you for joining us and stopping through. The man that never really speaks, Kareem Big Birch. <laughs> yeah. Dropped the Air Force One Rockefeller shoe. He's show. talking I got a mine. lot through the art, though, man. I mean, I, lo- I love what you and Emery doing. People always be like, why are you always wearing rock stuff? I'm like, because it's dope. Right. Yes. From the sweatsuits yeah, to the sweatshirts, yeah, yeah. the T-shirts. That's Absolutely. what I said. It ain't just about the logo or whatever it is that we're promoting. If it ain't quality, nobody's going to really wear it. Do you enjoy doing interviews? Um, I mean, it's work. You know, it's not, it's not like I, you know, I wake up and I look forward to it. You know? Cause I was like, when you came out, I was like, we got to get Biggs on the show. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know that he would ever really do it. We tried mm-hmm. twice already. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was the third time. These are yeah. guys that have he ignored but, me last week. I hit him yesterday. I was like, I right, I'm back home. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the thing with like him, Emery. These are guys that have been trying to avoid being recorded their whole life. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Still can't, still can't get Tata to talk, though. Now you ain't going to get Tata yeah, to talk. Tata's and don't forget Tata. the line is still at Barney's, right? You can get the line at Barney's? Yeah, the line is at Barney's. You go to Barney's and go get the line. And uh, we appreciate you for joining us. Thank you. It's Biggs. It's Allah. the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hoffa.